What is going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the JLA The Tower of Babel Deluxe Edition from DC Comics. So stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Here we have JLA The Tower of Babel The Deluxe Edition. So first of all, it is an oversized hardcover. Uh, the Deluxe Editions at DC are, all happen to be oversized hardcovers. And here is a brand new cover by Howard Porter, who was the artist at the time on JLA. Uh, very surprised that we didn't get a follow-up omnibus to the JLA by Grant Morrison omnibus. This has all of JLA's issues, and then some of the missing issues are included in here. So we're also going to be talking about some of the orphaned issues between both of these collections. But as you can tell from here, this deluxe edition is as tall as this omnibus. And we've gone back to the classic JLA logo. We don't have this new JLA logo that they used for the omnibus. So probably somebody else did the designs on this deluxe edition. So even the spines are different. This deluxe edition has JLA at the top, the title of the story in here. There's more than the Tower of Babel collected in here, by the way, and the creators as well as the DC logo down there. Then we have the back of the book. The book, by the way, retails for $34.99. Let's talk about this book, what it collects, what missing issues are in neither of these two, and if they're really deal breakers or not. Let's go ahead and get started. How dare I, I almost forget to remove the dust jacket. What the hell is wrong with me? Oh, nice. Okay. So this is an original piece right here by Howard Porter for the trade paperback version of the Tower of Babel. So there's the spine. So the Tower of Babel has been previously collected in the trade paperback editions, and here's a cover to the very first part of the Tower of Babel. Now we can get this opened. So here's your bookend pages, or if you learn anything from watching my video, this is really called the fly leaf and the end sheet. Both of these are end sheets, and this is the pasted down end sheet. So Tower of Babel, the deluxe edition, for the first time in deluxe edition, also containing other works uh, in here from the JLA series by Mark Wade. But here are your creators, Mark Wade, Devin Grayson, D. Curtis Johnson, and I'll tell you why I got really excited when I saw that name of D. Curtis Johnson. Your artists, Howard Porter, Arnie Jorgensen, Mark Pajarillo, and a few others here, as far as the inkers and the colorist. There is a nice introduction here by Mark Wade. You all know how I love hearing things behind the scenes. Uh, he talks a little bit about his brief break from Flash, and then when Grant Morrison and Mark Miller took over Flash, the, the editors at DC were like, wait, Grant Morrison can't keep up with the schedule. We need somebody to do some fill-in issues. And sure enough, in comes Mark Wade with some ideas. So let's talk about the content first. The This issue, and as you can tell here, is issue number 18. Not collected in the JLA by Grant Morrison omnibus. Love this, by the way. This is perfect. Look at that. Front cover, no title, no numbers anywhere. But here's the information in the back. Howard Porter, John Dell are the artists. Uh, the only thing they don't tell you is who the writer is, but all the title, all the titles are in here. So this book has 280 pages, retails for $34.99, and collects JLA 18 through 21, 32 through 33, 43 through 46, and then stories from JLA Secret Files number three, which is all part of the Tower of Babel, which is probably where I'm going to focus most of this video on, but I did want to show you all some of this early stuff. So this immediately follows the storyline of Pro, uh, Prometheus. I think it's Prometheus Rising. I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head what the storyline is called, but it does follow up that storyline. Now, what is lacking in here and the omnibus are three issues, and that is issue 27, 35, and 42. Uh, issue 27 is that the one with the May, I think it's the one with the Mezo. Um, he's uh, that's the one that's written by Mark Miller. Surprise, it wasn't in the JLA by Grant Morrison omnibus. 35, that's the issue with by JM DeMatteis, and it's um, what is his name? It's part of the uh, Judgment Judgment Day, I think. Yeah, and then. 42. That's why I got excited when I saw Dan Curtis Johnson's name because he wrote issue 42, so I thought they were going to sneak it in here. No, he helped co-write an issue in here. 
think it's part of the secret files. And that was the issue with the atom, but also not collected in here. So we call those issues orphaned issues. So not collected in oversized format in here, nor in the JLA by Grant Morrison omnibus. Hey, right, let's skip a few. But before we get to the Tower of Babel storyline, since I know most of you probably want to see those pages and talk a, a little bit about the stories, here are the fill-in issues towards the beginning of issue 18 and this little story arc features the character of Julian September and a bunch of Justice League members disappearing for absolutely no reason of course there's a mystery behind that and it's a nice little twist I remember this fill-in issue and then we have the oh, the Adam Strange issue where he kidnaps a bunch of the Justice League to of course help him out there's always a misunderstanding uh, there's an issue in here that kind of ties into No Man's Land, and that's co-written by Devin Grayson, uh, where they're trying to get Bruce Wayne to help him out, but Bruce Wayne is, of course, is he the real Bruce Wayne or not? Then, of course, all of it leads into this era right here, this particular storyline, The Tower of Babel, kicking off with issue number 43. So, this is such an amazing story arc, because it's, it's definitely top it's my favorite justice league story i did a best justice league collected editions i think wow when was that when the i think when the j uh, justice league movie came out so three or four years ago and this always ranks as number one for me it is dark it is freaking badass it's batman at his worst and best and of course the villain that they have to use for this is none other than the demon's head raj al ghul love it still calls him detective so what Raj does, him and Talia, and of course all his members of the League of Assassins, they dig the graves of Martha and Thomas Wayne to, like, it's not really kidnapping, body napping. And Bruce is in shock. He's like, what? That's, that's dark. That is some dark crap right there. Bruce is visiting his parents' graves, as he always does, and he notices that, yes, their graves have been robbed, their bodies have been taken, and it's Raj al Ghul that did it. Of course, he has a big plan. Now, there's a lot of things that happen here, but the most kick-ass thing that happens here, and I'm not even going to tell you why it's called Tower of Babel, but the most kick-ass thing that happens here, and this is just a little bit of a spoiler, so if you don't know anything about Tower of Babel or have not seen the animated adaptation, it's called Doom, you know, by all means, please put me on mute. But, for those of you that don't care about spoilers or have already read it, to me, the most kick-ass thing about this is that Raj uses Batman's documents against him. So all his files, all the Batman protocols, he uses against Batman to take down his team members in the Justice League. So Batman, of course, being three steps of the ahead of the game, always has written protocols down of how he would take out each member of the Justice League if they were either brainwashed or had turned evil. Now, this is all fine and dandy. Like, everybody assumes that's what Batman's supposed to do, right? Yeah, sure, whatever. The Justice League members would have been cool with that. As a matter of fact, it's funny because Mark Waid even talks about that. This conversation would have gone a lot better if Batman had just said, Hey guys, by the way, I love you all, but if you all go crazy and turn evil... I did find ways to kill each and every one of you, but he never did, and that's the kicker. That's what destroys the Justice League from the inside when they find out that it's Batman's files that Raja Al Ghul is using against them. That's badass. Like I said, I'm not even going to talk about what the actual plan of the Tower of Babel is, of how all of this gets resolved, or if they ever trust Batman again. You can find that out for yourself. I just came here to talk about that. That is so awesome. Now, in the animated movie, which was... Uh, the screenplay was written by Dwayne McDuffie, and that was actually his last work. Phenomenal creator. Wrote one of my favorite Justice League stories with Injustice League. But they changed the character of Raj to, uh, I think they used Vandal Savage in the animated uh, movie. So remember when I said that Raj took Batman's parents' bodies? It was all to throw him off of his game. So he's focused on trying to find his parents and less focused on what the hell's going on. Meanwhile, Raj is taking out the Justice League with Batman's own files. Awesome. Here's what the artwork looks like. Howard Porter still kicking ass. And there for a while he had stopped drawing because he broke his hand, so he's like his art style had to change. So that's that's really cool that he's back to drawing again. But this is what his style looked like in the 90s. Now, it surprises me that they went this route instead of an omnibus route cuz Mark Wade's run went all the way up to issue I think it was 60 of this uh series. So they could have really, I'm not going to uh, 
doesn't show any more pages from here because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Um, but they really could have put all of this in a, yes, it would definitely have been a smaller omnibus edition, but they could have included the missing issues, those orphaned issues that we talked about that were not written by Grant Morrison nor Mark Waid. And they could have probably put in the Midsummer's, uh, what was it, Midsummer's Nightmare, the story that uh, Mark Waid co-wrote with Fabian Iniciesa. They could have put in Year One. You know, it just surprises me that they didn't go the omnibus route. They went a deluxe edition route. Uh, so in chronological order, even though I keep my Omnis separate from my OHCs, except for the X-Men, because, you know, X-Men. But anyway, uh, but I know people that keep their books together in chronological order. So it looks really weird to have a big, one of the fattest omnibus available from DC. And then this book right here, which has 280 pages. Then as far as the extras in the back... I'm not going to show you, but what they do have is the cover to the trade paperback right here. Uh, they also have the cover to the, this is a brand new cover, of course, to the artwork on the dust jacket. And they have the penciled version of this in there as well. So that's really cool. See what I mean? Howard Porter coming back, even though his art style has changed a little bit, but still kicking ass in artwork. And I know there's people that, you know, can either leave or take him, but I always thought his art was pretty good, even though this is not him. And of course, we're not talking about Howard Porter. There we go. I wasn't showing pictures of his art. Let's take a look at this binding together. So what we're looking at here is sewn binding, but there's a lot of glue down here. So there's really not much of an eye. And honestly, for a book that's only 280 pages, you're not really going to need much of one. It's laying over pretty nice, honestly. Not that many spread pages either. Lots of splash pages back then. But it is laying over really nice. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this deluxe edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking it up, if you have the trade paperbacks, if you've never read it, if you're a fan of the animated adaptation, the, what was it, Doom? Yes. Let me know all those comments down below. And what you think about the missing issues. Is that a deal breaker? Are you okay with those missing issues just not being collected in oversized format? Do you already have the trades? Are you going to upgrade? I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop. It's a great way to support the channel. All of the designs for the t-shirts, the hoodies, and all of that is down below in the description of the video, as well as the link to our Patreon. And thank you so much to our existing patrons. We couldn't do videos like this if it wasn't for you all. So, more importantly, everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.